and welcome to clinicalpath.com. This lecture is on pulmonary vascular disease. We're going to discuss two topics in this. We're going to be talking about pulmonary hypertension and we're going to be talking about pulmonary embolism. So let's start with pulmonary hypertension. First of all, let's get the terms right. There's a wrinkle in the term pulmonary hypertension because the strict definition of pulmonary hypertension is basically any disease in which pulmonary artery pressure is going to be greater than 25 millimeters of mercury. But you've got to distinguish between that definition of pulmonary hypertension from the term pulmonary artery hypertension. Because pulmonary artery hypertension is the new term for what we used to call primary pulmonary hypertension. So in other words, pulmonary artery hypertension is a subset of pulmonary hypertension. So when we come to the classification of pulmonary hypertension, this is the WHO modified criteria. It starts with pulmonary artery hypertension. So pulmonary artery hypertension, a subset of pulmonary hypertension, is divided by the WHO into idiopathic, so that makes sense, no one knows what causes it, versus familial, so this is going to be our group with the bone modeling protein receptor 2 and all the other known genetic problems, and then a group that they call associated. So the associated group is going to be have the same arterial proliferation problem which is going to include a number of things, but specifically for us, the connective tissue disorders like scleroderma, lupus, that family, and Eisenmenger syndrome, which we see when we have a large enough left to right shunt. Then we go into what they call the secondary causes. So the second category, and this is how WHO numbers them, is going to be pulmonary hypertension associated with left heart failure. Group 3 is pulmonary hypertension with pulmonary hypoxia. So these are mostly going to be our lung diseases, COPD and our interstitial lung diseases. Group 4 is going to be pulmonary hypertension with recurrent thromboembolic disease. And then the last group is going to be miscellaneous. So we can see then we've got to be able to handle our primary group and then left ventricle failure, pulmonary hypoxic change, most commonly is going to be COPD in our culture with core pulmonale, and then thromboembolic disease. So let's take a look and make sure we can do the pathophysiology for each of these. Remember that when we talk about pulmonary artery hypertension, formerly called primary pulmonary hypertension, this is when we have a decrease in our vascular luminal cross-sectional area. And this is mostly going to be due to diseases of the small pulmonary vessels. Because the small vessels, just like anywhere else, those are going to be our resistant vessels. And so this resistance in the pulmonary arteries is going to be due to two things. It's going to be due to endothelial defects and smooth muscle proliferation that are going to lead to remodeling and then perhaps as well, not totally clear on this, some component of vasoconstriction. So when we talk about pulmonary artery hypertension, we're basically talking about remodeling of the small arteries giving us a decrease in their cross-sectional area. When we talk about core pulmonale, right, this is going to be the response of the vasoconstriction, which is a poorly understood.